2020. I'm glad that this year is almost done. Till then, I wanna do a plugin list with the plugins that I've used when mixing. I don't wanna show the plugins that I've used sometimes. I wanna show just the plugins that I use on a daily basis when mixing, so you can get an idea what to get for yourself or what plugins I use in my everyday mixing situation. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you do, please subscribe, hit the like button. Let's get right into it. I want to show you my most used plugins this year. I have EQs, compressors, delays, reverbs, and a special category where I include things like CLA vocals or Suit, Spiff, and other plugins like that. Let's start out with the EQs. The first one is the Arturia V76. This is more than an EQ. It has some nice saturation. It's a really easy to use tonal shaper because you only have two bands. Probably my most used EQ, FabFilter Pro Q3, the best EQ that we have at the moment. SSL 4000E, my go-to channel strip. I really like the EQ section. I rarely use the compressor, the gate or expander. I like the saturation. My go-to EQ when it comes to mixing uh, beats or things like that. BX Digital version 3. This is the mid-side EQ that I use on my mix bus when mastering. It's a really versatile beast of an EQ. Curve Bender from Softube, a really nice vocal bass EQ for me. It has a really nice sound and I like the, the versatility of it. The last EQ is CAQ from Sound Toys. This one is a sleeper. I use it on vocals with great success because it also has a nice character. Let's move to compressors, Arturia. Fat 76. This slowly but surely replaced my other 76 uh, emulations. It has a certain character. You have more control over almost everything. And this is one of my go-to compressors when it comes to rap vocals. Next up is the Tube Star from Arturia. This one oozes character and it's a nice leveler. I use it in combination with the FAT76. Then we have a limiter. This is my go-to limiter FabFilter Pro L2. TubeTech, this is one compressor that I always wanted to try out and uh, buy, but it's kind of expensive. They had a sale, I took the plunge, I got it. And it's a really nice compressor that I'm using on vocals. It has some of that recognizable in-your-face sound for, for vocals. Smart Comp, for me, this is a really transparent compressor. I like using it on my my vocal bus. I like using this in sidechain with the spectral compression on. It's a really great compressor. This one is an amazing compressor. It's Unison Mastering Compressor. This replaced all my other mastering compressors. I've been using this one on probably 99% of my masters. I've been using it for I think two months or something like that. You can achieve almost any sound with this compressor. We have the classic two-way. I recently purchased a UAD satellite. It's a classic two-way. I like how it sounds. In terms of usability, I don't like certain things. This one is C4. I use it all the time. You probably notice that I'm using it on vocals. C6, similar to C4. This one has more bands. I use this for cleaning. L2, my go-to limiter when I need to send a mix draft out to the client, just slap this on the master, adjust the threshold so I have the desired loudness. It's a great sounding limiter, it's not transparent but it does the job. Our compressor, in the first half of the year I've used this a lot on vocals and his companion Arvox. This is a nice gate, a really nice compressor that you can use to level up vocals. It's the compressor that I use first in the chain when I just need a bit of leveling. Next up, the delays. 
or the delay. I've checked a couple of my projects and have lots of great delays from other companies too. This one is probably the, the best delay that you can get. It has everything and once you get used to the interface, it's really hard to go to a different delay. It sounds great, a lot of styles, so it's really versatile. You can achieve any sound you want with it. This is the delay that I've used for all the year and I think previous years too. Just three reverbs that I know that are my go-tos. Seventh Heaven Professional from Liquid Sonic, amazing vocal reverb, Bahala Vintage Verb vocals and everything else and as something that i use from time to time valhalla room the plugins that i'm showing you are the plugins that i use most of the time i do use other reverbs other delays from time to time in certain situations when i need a different effect when i need a different sound i have the the core plugins that i use and on top of those i use other plugins to spice things up so this is my plugin foundation. And then we have the last category, which has the most plugins, and that's the special category. We start off with Aiken Digital Denoise. This is a really easy to use denoiser. I use it when I need something done really fast with a minimal CPU footprint. D-click, I use it on vocals a lot. Again, when I need something really fast with a minimal CPU footprint, Autotune Pro, this is my go-to plugin for vocal tuning. I still use Melodyne sometimes, but not all the time. This is what I usually use. Shaper Box 2, amazing when you need some movement, amazing for filter breaks. I use it for panning effects to move things from left to right. It's a really great creative plugin. Simplon, this is a filter when I need something done fast. Two filters, easy controls, frequency, peak, and a couple of filter types. It's just my favorite little plugin. Trash 2, this is an all-in-one saturation distortion type of plugin. I use this to achieve crazy distortions. I use this to achieve special effects. Ozone 9, this is on most of my masters. I like the dynamic EQ on it. I like the imager on it. I like the master rebalance. I use it sometimes if the mix doesn't sound that great and it has some balance issues. The click from RX, this is from the new RX8. This is what I use most of the time when I'm printing the final mix. If I have some clicks on the vocals, this is uh, more CPU intensive and has more latency than the Akon one. That's why sometimes I use that one, but this one sounds a bit better for me and it does a better job voice the noise using it on vocals if i have problematic recordings tape stop for tape stops degrader when i need to do some sample reduction beat depth reduction and some saturation i don't know exactly why i like it i think it's the the 2D interface and it really sounds great. A new one that I started using a couple of months ago is Haze from Clefgrand. This is a stereo manipulation tool. I use this on ad-libs, I use this on instruments, background vocals and other things like that. Suit 2, classic already. I use this on everything. Vocals, instrument buses, submixes, mastering. It's a really nice tool. Spiff, my go-to transient designer when I really need to dial in the settings. PSM3, this is a saturation. I really didn't use it that much in the second half of the year due to the fact that I've moved from mastering in the box to mastering hybrid and I get a lot of saturation from pieces like the Rupert Neve Design Master Bus uh, Processor, Better Make a Limiter, the AD Plus from Dangerous. So I have some ability to color my mixes out of the box, but it's still one of my favorite saturation plugins. Then we have Stereo Savage, Stereo Manipulation. I use this when I need subtle stereo movements, really great for that. Standard Clip, a clipper, 
I use it for mastering. When I do the mastering in the box, I use it for clipping MP3 beats. When I have some nasty peaks, my go-to clipper, the inflator, when you need things to pop out of the mix. Gulfos, I use it in a really subtle way, like let's say 5% on the recover, 5% on tame, and it just adds a bit of movement that I really, really like. Then we have radiator from Sound Toys. When you need weight, when you need subtle saturation, when you need basic EQ controls, this is one plugin that you really have to try out. Vocal line, when you are dealing with doubles, this saved me so many hours of work. CLA vocals, I use it on my vocal bus sometimes. I use it on ad libs, instruments. It's a great all in one solution for vocals. Doubler, when I want to do that pitch down effect and I need it to be really stereo. Meta flanger, I go to flanger. It's a strange one because I have better flangers when it comes to interface but i got used to this one and the default settings are just working every single time s1 again from waves when you need some more width when you need to move things around in the stereo field another classic waves to real time i like using this one because it has a different sound from auto tune it's really great option when it comes to vocal tuning. Spectre, this is my favorite saturation plugin at the moment. It's mid-side, a lot of control, really versatile. RC20, retro color, when you need to dirty things up, an amazing plugin. I use it when mixing beats on samples, I use it on vocals when I need transitions, a really great plugin. The last plugin is a tape emulation from UAD. I use it when I deal with really, really bright vocals. I really like the 7.5 Ips. It darkens the vocals, a really nice roll off on the top end, and that's why I use it. These are the plugins for my mixing foundation. This is what I use every day. These are not something that I recommend just because they are flashy or because they are new. These are the plugins that I actually use as a tool in my mixes. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe, hit the like button. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram. Thanks for the support and see you guys really, really soon. Cheers.